I think it's time for you to delete your Goodreads account. Due to recent events, in my opinion, Goodreads does not care about its users. They perpetuate misogyny, hate, and misinformation, and they want to silence you if you speak out about it. I will preface this video by saying if you've never seen my face before, if you don't know me, if you have no idea who I am, you're probably going to need a little bit of context. In this video, I will be referring to some events that took place in August 2023 between myself and an author who I do not even want to utter his name or give him any more publicity. His ego is plenty big enough. Every time I talk about him, he gets something out of it, I truly believe. So I will be referring to him as Rat Claw. He's just like a little rat claw, just like a little rat clawing around. And <laughs> me and this author had some online discourse, part of which took place on Goodreads. I really, really hate rehashing these events, but every single time that I don't give context here, all of my comments are, wait, what happened? Is anyone else confused? I think I missed a few episodes, blah, blah, blah. So basically what happened is this author wrote some hurtful and disgusting misogynistic comments about me in a book and then bragged about it all across social media and had been responding to the videos I made about him. One negative review for months without me knowing. If you want to know the full depth of what happened with that situation, please go listen to my podcast episode that I have that details the entire situation accurately. And I say that because this is kind of a separate issue for a separate video. I really don't want to get into all of that right now, but there have been a lot of people making commentary videos about the situation with very inaccurate information, and that has kind of rubbed me the wrong way, especially when this information is being put out by channels that are much larger than mine and spreading misinformation, and when that information is behind a paywall like Patreon, profiting off of my traumatic experience, I don't know. Every time that this situation is brought up, it just directs more hate at me. So yes, we do need to address the misogyny problem in literature in general, specifically in horror, and to niche down even further in extreme horror and splatterpunk. But every time the situation is spoken about, I get flooded with negative comments and horrible DMs. And it makes it especially hard to avoid that when the information that's being stated is not accurate or it comes across in a flippant way where the audience just thinks that they can shit on the victim. Just like the person making the commentary video is shitting on the perpetrator. I just wanted to mention none of the people that are reporting on the situation have reached out to me for a comment or to fact check their information other than during the situation last August as it was happening, Rachel, I did provide her with primary sources and a timeline and Sharni from Sharni and Books did reach out to me as well. And I really appreciate both of them taking the time to make sure that it was okay with me and it wasn't gonna be dangerous for me to make their video and to ask permission and make sure that they had everything correct. My DMs are always open and they are the only two that have done that so far. Anyway, this is all besides the point. If you want the full rundown, please Please go listen to the second episode of my podcast. I will link it down below if you want to access it quickly. And then you can have all the details and all the context. So please don't comment. I don't know what she's talking about because I'm fucking telling you. <laughs> What I really wanna talk about today is a new development related to the situation that has to do with Goodreads. I think if you're a reader or you found yourself watching this video, you probably know what Goodreads is. It's probably the most convenient and most widely used reading, tracking, and statistics app or website available. Most people use it to track their reading throughout the year. They set a goal for how many books they're gonna read and they use it to share reviews with a community of readers. Now there are many alternatives to Goodreads, which most people, I, I guess, tend to not know about. But during the pandemic, when I was prioritizing not supporting Amazon as much, I did switch over from Goodreads to the Storygraph. I just think it's a better platform overall. The stats that they provide are really great. I use them in every single one of my wrap-up videos. And they have a much more accessible, easy system for searching books that you want to review. Even if you're searching for an indie published book that is not on 
on their website. You can add in the ISBN yourself and manually add it, which I think is really cool. I also recently discovered the Fable app, which is, I guess, more similar to Goodreads in that it is community oriented. So there are a ton of reading tracking apps out there that are based on community and reviews and statistics which is really what Goodreads provides. But I think a lot of people are drawn to Goodreads, not only because it's owned by Amazon and that entire conglomerate, which is just more accessible to people, but also because of the connection to Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. I have a Kindle and when you're reading on your Kindle, as soon as you finish a book, it prompts you to rate it and that rating goes on to Goodreads. So it's just ease. What I'm proposing here is that we overlook ease and convenience for just a second. Maybe we put that to the side and look at the ethics of Goodreads themselves. I have personal experience, which I will share, but I believe that my personal experiences have systemic implications. A couple months ago, I received an email from Goodreads regarding my reviews. I will read that for you now. It says, a notification about your Goodreads review. Goodreads takes the responsibility of maintaining the authenticity of ratings and reviews and protecting our diverse community of readers and authors very seriously. As a part of this, we are removing, not just mine, all ratings and reviews added during a time of unusual activity on this book, the book in question that this author wrote, including yours. If you would like a copy of your review, please let us know before this date. As a reminder, all content posted to Goodreads must follow our community guidelines, insinuating that I broke them. You can learn more about our work to protect the authenticity of ratings and reviews on Goodreads in our community update here. Sincerely, the Goodreads team. So when I received this email, immediately I felt a pit in my stomach. It felt like a massive betrayal. And when I received it, I literally just sat and cried in my car because it felt like I was being silenced all over again. It was like this massive platform that has a lot of power just took a look at the situation and sided with the oppressor. They basically said, you're in the wrong, you broke our community guidelines, and took the side of misogyny, abuse of power, and internet stalking, which is what this was, and alleged defamation as well, because they are keeping a book on their website that has allegedly defamatory remarks against myself, and they are not going to provide a disclosure or let my review stand on their website so their users know when they're reading reviews what they're getting into if they might pick up this book. They would not allow my review, which gave accurate information as to what the book includes and what someone might be supporting, stay up on their website. And we've been through this part of the issue before, which is I did not read the book. Okay, no, I'm not claiming to have read the book. I'm not lying. I've never said that I read the book. Even in my review, I clearly stated I did not read the book. My review was not coming from a place of, I read this book and here's what I thought about it. My review said, this book was inspired by me a real person. It calls me out by name in the dedication, it's misogynistic, and it's disgusting. In no way did I ever claim to read the book, but those are all true things about my feelings about the book. You could say that I read the dedication and acknowledgements and then DNF'd it. To know that my review was completely disregarded and just taken down makes me feel incredibly unsafe. And it also lets me know that Goodreads did zero research into the situation. They just went ahead and silenced the victim. And they took down every single review that happened in this time of, quote, suspicious activity. And I know that this is a controversial issue around review bombing. I do not support that in any way. If you haven't read a book and you don't know anything about it, you really shouldn't be giving it a review unless it's personal to you. Like, I don't think we should expect Brittany to read Jamie Lynn's book and give it a negative review after she read it. She lived it. It's about her. She's allowed to give it a negative review without reading it. It's okay to call out the systemic and negative implications in a piece of literature without having read the whole thing. And this gets even trickier once we start introducing DNFing into the conversation, which I'll talk about that a little bit later. But I also happen to know that a ton of my very dedicated, very sweet, amazing followers did read the book in full in order so they could give a fully informed review that would stay up on the platform and not break any community guidelines. 
they were very well thought out, well worded, and they did not attack the author in any way. They were objective reviews of the literature. To know that all of my followers that did that, that invested their time into this disgusting piece of material in order to help me, their reviews have just been taken down, I think is fucking gross and it makes me so mad. These are real reviews that are being taken down and completely silenced by Goodreads. So nobody is forewarned when they're looking at this book that there's any kind of controversy around it. The trouble for me here is not only that Goodreads is standing by an abuser and an oppressor, but it's also the lack of consistency that they're showing here and the complete disregard that they're showing for the users of their website that want accurate reviews. If you're going to say that these reviews that were made at the time are suspicious because it seems like they're coming from people who didn't read the entire book and then you're going to remove them, then you also need to be removing reviews from people who DNF'd a book at 10, 20%. Hell, sometimes I see reviews on Goodreads and maybe it's for comedy, maybe it's serious that they say they DNF'd after 10 pages. And it also introduces a question of authenticity when you are rating a book five stars that you've never read before. I see people rating and reviewing books all the time before they come out just because they're released by their favorite author. They haven't received an arc, there's no written review, it'll just be like five stars, I'm so excited for this, I can't wait for this. And it's to boost the book and create hype so other people that follow them on Goodreads know about it. If you are so concerned with the accuracy of your reviews, those should not be posted as well. All of those need to be taken down. I also have an issue with Goodreads consistency in the way that they are approaching working with this author in general. The way that they're allowing some of this man's books to be on the platform where others of his have been removed in the past for violating guidelines. It doesn't seem like there is a very clear policy here at all that protects the safety of the site's users and the authors as well. I remember a few years ago, The Dare by Harley LaRue was removed from from Goodreads and I believe removed from the Kindle as well. And that really rubbed me the wrong way, especially at the time. There's nothing inappropriate about that book that's not disclosed in trigger warnings on page one. It's a kinky, smutty novella. And Goodreads taking it off the platform just read as like yucking yums. However, if that's the way that they want to run their platform with this certain moral high ground, I mean, I guess it's their prerogative and they can do that. However, keeping up a book like this, which is actually harmful to me, a real life person who's called out by name in the book and has been victimized within the dedication. And the author himself has said out loud on social media multiple times that I inspired the fictional parts of the book as well. It just all feels extremely hypocritical and inconsistent. Also, I mentioned earlier the inconsistency within this author's backlog. The actual listings for his books, not reviews, but actual listings for some of his books have been removed from Goodreads as a whole in the past. And that would be the Hub series, which I've spoken about before in my original video that inspired this situation. Aspen and I had a discussion about the extreme horror community, which was partly spurned by the release of Hub. Cannot believe that it's now a trilogy. Apparently 350 pages wasn't enough for child abuse content. We had to have three books of it. So they did not allow these books to be listed on the platform on Goodreads itself. And I remember at the time reviewers taking other books like Child Care for Dummies and using that listing to rate Hub and then putting the review for Hub in the comments. They were saying, this is not a review for this book. This is a review for Hub. It's not available to rate here on Goodreads. And those reviews are allowed to stay up on the platform. Besides the fact that the whole reason this author's trilogy was taken down and not allowed to be featured on Goodreads was because it is absolutely abhorrent. It goes beyond commentary and the wording used in a lot of the depictions of CSA in these books reads as over-sexualized and just absolutely stomach-turning and disgusting. 
It feels exploitative of children. Fictional children, but children, and exploitative nonetheless. So Goodreads made the decision to remove the books and not have them available for rate and review on their website. And I, I agree with that. I don't necessarily agree with their call on The Dare by Harley LaRue, but whether I agree with it or not, that was the moral high ground that they were taking, was like, we're not gonna allow this type of content on our platform to be reviewed. However, a book that was dedicated to me is allowed to stay up on the platform and the reviews are taken down. And any information about the accuracy of the experience of reading this book is silenced. That feels backwards. I don't know if it feels backwards to anyone else but it tells me exactly where Goodreads stands. It seems that they value the exploitation of fictional children over the exploitation of a very real woman. I am living and breathing in front of you, Goodreads, letting you know you are perpetuating the violence against me in my DMs, some of which happened on your website. Overall, the hypocrisy that's happening on Goodreads and the silencing of victims is just too much for me. If it really was a stellar platform, you know, I might fight for some change and want to stay on it. But at the end of the day, it's really not a good website that we're giving all of our business to. We are looking at all those ads as we scroll and look at other people's posts. And they don't deserve it. Honestly, since I've been off in 2020, I don't miss it. I love the story graph. And I would encourage you to move off of Goodreads and find something that's a better fit for you. Whether that's uh, using somebody's template that they make. Some people have really cool reading tracking templates on Etsy. You can also use the story graph or Fable, which I'm getting into as well. You can host a book club on Fable, which I will be doing with my Pretty Girl book club as well. We will host it over on Fable. And to be quite honest, like it's been memed to death like readers have been clowning on goodreads for so long now just the antiquated aspects of their website the search feature let's actually do something about it instead of just clowning on it choose to support another platform that is not this massive conglomerate that is run by Amazon and doesn't give a fuck about readers. I would much rather support a website that is run by people who deeply care about reading and reviewing. Also, I thought it was hilarious that Goodreads cites their love for diversity in the email that they sent me when we all know the books that are on the recommended page, the books that are on the homepage. Compare Goodreads to a story graph and you see a very different selection of books. Storygraph even prompts you to give commentary about the diversity in each book with every single review that you write. That is valuing diversity, not silencing a woman who's been victimized by an author on your platform. I also do want to share my response to Goodreads because I didn't just receive this email and then get all mad and want to make this video. I did respond to them privately and I tried to give my side of the story. I gave them the chance to sort it out with me, but unfortunately I didn't hear any reply back from a Goodreads support. So I will just share my reply now. Thank you for making me aware of this issue. Are you aware the book in question that you're removing reviews from was written about and dedicated to me with harmful remarks in the dedication? The unusual activity that you're citing is outrage from readers and reviewers who were not properly warned about the abhorrent material in this book because it's featured on your site as any other novel would be. I'm aware that you've previously had to remove other books from this author from your platform, including the Hub Trilogy, which details in-depth descriptions of extreme childhood sexual abuse. Please follow the standard that you've set in the past for your platform by removing the book in question as well. The unusual reviews are not the problem. The listing for the book is. I would prefer to handle this professionally and privately. However, if there's an improper response from support, I will not hesitate to share this with my community on BookTube and BookTok. I've already moved to tracking my reading on the story graph due to their superior website. Now I'm wondering if their ethics are more aligned with mine and my viewers' morals as well. Please keep me updated. I can provide you with references, evidence, and my police report with APD against the author if you need it. And I received nothing back from Goodreads support. No one reached out to me at all. And it seems that they have been in contact with the author, so that tells me exactly where they stand. And I think that we should hold Goodreads accountable. This is not the first time, by far, that Goodreads has done something wrong. But to me, this is the nail in the coffin. Delete your Goodreads account, period, the end. Oh, and rat. <laughs>
because I know you're watching. Hey, bestie. If you think that I'm eventually just gonna roll over and give in to this covert attacking that you are continuously doing, all the digs that you're taking at me, you're wrong. I will fight back on you with such feminine power that A24 will have to create a cinematic universe around it. And to everyone else, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really do appreciate it. And I know that there's gonna be a ton of negative comments on this video, okay? Please do your best to ignore the misogyny in the comments. Do not engage. They are literally just mad that they've never felt the touch of a woman. So the last thing you should do is engage with them. They are feeling it through the screen. They are feeding off of it. Do not give it to them. Just let their comments sit there unanswered and abandoned like their mommies and daddies probably did to them which is why they are all up in this twisted logic to begin with i promise my next video will not be this serious and we'll be back to reading thrillers horror romance and speculative books and having a good time with it again thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye